We are delighted to welcome our next speaker, former German Minister of Finance, Dr. Theo Weigel. A member of the Bundestag from 1972 to 2002, Dr. Weigel was Germany's longest serving finance minister, holding the role under Helmut Kohl from 1989 to 1998. A formative time for Germany, which included reunification. He was instrumental in the introduction of the European single currency and is known as the father of the euro. After leaving public office, Dr. Weigel served as the corporate compliance monitor at Siemens and was appointed by Airbus to an independent compliance review panel. He holds a doctorate in legal and political science and is an honorary doctor of law at the University of South Carolina. Dr. Weigel remarks that it pays to be decent quoting Vladimir Bartoszewski, former foreign minister of Poland. Thank you so much for your nice introduction. It, it is a pleasure for me to be here. You know, I was four years the first non-American monitor of Siemens. Then I worked three years in a panel for Airbus, and now I am engaged from Ernst & Young to evaluate trust in quality. What is a monitor? A monitor is an independent observer of the compliance system. In other words, they are independent from the company and from the US authorities. The monitor tests the compliance system, i.e., tone from the top, tone from the middle, financial controls, the compliance program, and I think very important that the compliance system is sustainable. I keep hearing the assertion, you have to pay to get anywhere in business in some countries. Some acknowledge is quite openly. One businessman in Germany, 10 years ago, he has uh, said in the paper he, had, he has to pay a bribe more than once. He went on claim that the fight against corruption and process of establishing compliance in companies is pure hypocrisy and that he only knew companies for whom contracts were more important than the compliance department. Unfortunately, it is not an isolated view. This is all the more astonishing if you take into account the fact that German companies should have taken action ages ago. Back in 97, the Federal Cabinet in Germany was discussing changes in the way useful expenditure is dealt with. In other words, it was bribe money and it was accepted in the law of taxation. And that was absolutely wrong. We changed it in 98. From 99 onwards, Bribery in international business became a punishable offense in Germany. A survey carried out by a consulting from Price Waterhouse Coopers in 2010 found that over half of all German major companies had not yet introduced a compliance program. The main objection against introducing such a program was too much bureaucracy and the benefits don't justify the cost and efforts. A common misconception. Compliance is corporate ethic claptrack. Compliance departments cause unproductive workplace. And that was absolutely wrong. Compliance is a shared task. Bribery does not pay. The cost of paying penalties and cleaning up is high. Contracts that are awarded through bribery are often loss-making. Everyone 
wants a share of profit gained through unfair means. Those who engineered the deal and those who sanctioned it on the other side. Corruption goes against any form of sustainability. It undermines fair competition, which we all rely on. Awareness from the topic of compliance has greatly increased in the media and among investors and customers. At the same time, companies threaten to impose draconian penalties if any infringements are identified. However, compliance means far more than just adhering to rules and laws. Compliance is a moral obligation on an equal footing with sustainable value creation. The claim of integrity is the, re the responsibility of us all. We all have to pay for the huge financial and social cost of corruption. The World Bank estimates that each year at least one trillion US dollar is spent on bribes. Attempts have been made to quantify the cost of corruption in the EU. According to the European Commission, corruption costs the EU economy around 120 billion per year in terms of lost tax revenues and investments. The European Parliamentary Research Services has found that if one includes indirect costs, EU GDP suffers annual losses ranging between 180 and more than 900 billion. The European Commission says that there are no corruption-free zones in the EU, as all member states are affected by the problem with varying degrees. But one company on its own will not change the world for the better. The fight against corruption can only succeed if we work together as an alliance, as a cartel of the good. In this process, policymakers play an important role in providing support. Also, anti-corruption coalitions of major players in a certain businesses area proved to be an adequate concept to strongly contribute to anti-corruption efforts. If major players commit to a level playing field in the interest of everybody, anti-corruption efforts are strengthened. The US, UK and France already have strict compliance regulation in place. Furthermore, there is consistent governmental prosecution practice of corruption violations in these countries. The German legislation, case law, and the practice of public prosecutor offices intensify the need to strengthen robust compliance structures. A solid compliance program provides more protection and saves more money in the long run than any lawsuit, fine or damage claim. Compliance should be become an integral part of the company. Compliance must be anchored in the workforce. Consultation with the compliance function must become the norm for employees. Compliance is even more than drafting policies and making internal rules. The main goal is lift internal control processes, intensive employee trainings, and the implementation of a speak up culture, promotion of a corporate culture that focuses on communication between employees. And very important is the tone from the top. Company executives demand bona fide behavior 
on various occasions. Greetings from the CEO in internal communication, compliance as an integral part of speeches and presentations, mentions in team meetings, in town hall meetings. The guiding principle is we only do legal business anywhere, all of us, and everybody. Constantly promoting the speak up culture, promoting through tone from the top and tone from the middle, functioning anonymous whistleblower system and zero tolerance policy, consistent sanctioning of employees and protection of whistleblowers and training causes. Necessary are internal campaigns of the communication department, discussions in the teams about compliance toppings, team talks, sure fix, value campaigns in the company. And very important are instruments of compliance, financial controls, due diligence checks by procurement before connecting business to think about third parties, suppliers, if necessary, better by compliance, registration of third parties in vendor master data, to reduce number of bank accounts, corporation banks, and employees with bank power of attorney existing worldwide should be reduced to, necessarily, to necessary level. And if possible, introduction of safe declarations by all sides worldwide regarding compliance with group-wide financial controls as well as implementation of on-site inspection, inspections of approximately two or three days by finance in headquarters at the sites to monitor compliance with the group-wide financial control. In his categorical imperative, Immanuel Kant, I think the most fam famous German philosopher, ask us to act as if the maxim of our action were to become a universal law of nature by our will. That rules out bribery. In contrast, Machiavelli, you know his name, believed that it is very disadvantageous to always be fair or pious, true, human, good fearing, but great benefit can be obtained from appearing to be fair. You know, that is wrong. There are still many in government and society who set store by this maxim. You mentioned in contrast to this, the title of Vladislav Patoshevsky's book puts it succinctly, it is worth being decent. And I think that is the best interpretation for Kant's, Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative. Thank you. Dr. Theo Weigel, thank you so much for your insights and 20, 30 years of experience in compliance and ethics. Now, we should have some questions from the viewers. It would be great if you can take some time to answer those. Let's take a look at the first question. Is the problem of corruption in, and corporate wrongdoing worse in Germany now than it was, let's say, 15 years ago? I think it's better today because there were scandals, punishments, and therefore I think the interest to do it better is now ongoing and everyone knew the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act from the United States and uh, they are uh, doing their job all around the world and that also happens in Germany. And I think compliance, good governance and 
ethic behavior is now a safe haven for companies and employers all over the world and especially also in Germany. Would you say there are certain industries that are more prone to misconduct when we look at the Pandora Papers and the very complex construct behind the offshore companies? Is that something that leads to misconduct? Yeah, there is a problem, of course, and I think the banking system and the financial system has to look more to this context and it's absolutely necessary to have a big coalition of uh, good doing and against the wrongdoing. And it's only possible if all countries, especially Western countries, work together. What are the biggest ethics and compliance challenges today in, uh, sorry, what were the biggest ones during German reunification? And are there parallels to today with globalization? <laughs> At that time, we had a problem. Of course, we introduced the d mark in Eastern Germany, and it functioned well. We had no attack on transports, no stealing of money, and no misuse of the banking system. But we have to privatize, at that time, more than 100,000 uh, companies. And there we had one problem. The old communist gatherer in Eastern Germany tried to bring out their money in other countries. And th also there were some Western managers, uh, managers uh, who, uh, sell, who sold some companies under price. But we tried to fight against with the prosecutors we had uh, supporting against this uh, prosecutors and also law firms. And therefore, I think we tried to prevent more problems, but we had some, but now I think it's absolutely finished. Do you see any parallels with the increasing globalization of companies now? Yes, of course, globalization brings uh, more problems, but therefore it's absolutely necessary to have a coalition of good willing country, countries. And uh, I think it's very important to have the support of the United States and the European uh, and the Europeans. And I think we are on a good way. One thing that has changed over the years is technology and the use of technology. How do you see the effectiveness of, of technology for compliance and ethics programs? Absolutely. There is a big progress to have payment factories, to have uh, IT systems. That's a big help uh, to have better financial controls, uh, controls and I think more even more companies are introducing such systems. How do you see corporate governance and also compliance evolving over the next decade, let's see, let's say? It's ongoing and I think it's the only way to create a better world in our system and for us all. And how do you see the main way of getting competitors to cooperate against misconduct? and corruption? I think we are on a good way. And uh, we know corruption and bribes are negative for all people, for companies, for employers. It costs a lot of money and we could spend this money for a better aim. I think that's a, a good vision to end off on. Thank you so much for being here in the studio. It's been great to talk to you. Dr. Theo Weigel, thank you. It was a pleasure.